Hello. T minus two minutes. Just making sure everything's running on the station. While I'm trying to get this all together. How we doing today? Very cool, very cool. I'm gonna let you guys roll in here. Oh, snaps. I guess we're starting a little early and I'm okay with that. All right, let's get Aaron in the Adam. <laughs> hey, going? man, how are you? Good, good, wonderful. Good. I, I love the background that you're in. That looks gorgeous. Is that your backyard? It is my backyard. Or it's a really, I, I want to say it's fake, but no, it's not. It's real. <laughs> All I have behind me is this plant and a little cactus. You got to have a plant. Green. You got to have a plant or that guy's going to make fun of you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I'm so glad that you could join me. Is this, uh, is this your first Instagram live? No, I've done a couple um but but it's always fun and there's lots of time in my schedule to talk music <laughs> agreed agreed well i'm so glad that you can join me again we were hanging out with pina of 311 who are doing uh two awesome back-to-back -back shows next friday the 13th a very superstitious day but honestly i feel like it's one of the best days i think it gets a bad rap but it's a really good one. Um, but you guys are performing at the Arizona State Fairgrounds, 5.30 p.m. and 8.30 p.m., which you can get your tickets at concertsinyourcar.com. But, you know, I am curious about all this. I think we've been, um, we've been very creative during this pandemic. Uh, I love that the revival of drive-in movies have come back. And the fact that you guys are doing a drive-in concert is even cooler. Have you gone to one yet, though? No, I haven't, but I've got lots of friends and bands who all, all are saying it's a great time from their point of view um, because it seems like the audience is having such a great time. So that all adds up to a win for me. And I, I miss playing shows like I never thought mm -hmm. I would. And uh, just, you know, just to be out there sweating on stage is, is something I've been dying to do since March. Uh, is this the longest amount of time you've gone without playing for an audience? Yeah, easily, quite easily. easily. We took summer off maybe in 98 or 99, and that was only a couple of months off. And we still did, you know, 80 shows that year or more. Um, so this is, this is, I don't know, it's a test. And, you know, it'll, it'll just be that much more exciting when we get back to it. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Um, you know, you guys, another cool thing about this year, even though the pandemic hit, is you've hit your 30-year anniversary as a band, which is pretty amazing you know is it safe to say this is the longest relationship you've ever been in oh easily yeah yep. <laughs> but not but not by that much honestly we really long-term relationships um we had our first manager for 27 years um it's all it's all about making things last it's all about being with people you trust and uh, and and the you know the zoom out the long haul the you know, we're better together than as individuals kind of thing. It's, it's, it's great. It's a, it's a great relationship. That's awesome. I mean, it's been a beautiful relationship for all of us as fans, you know, and you guys have done so much during that time to, uh, I guess, almost become a part of your fans' lives. You do so much for them. During this time, have there been different ways that you've tried to connect with your fans this year? I mean, I've done stuff like this before, you know, like just mm -hmm. to make it make it easy for everyone to see and hear an interview that they might have missed in a normal year where they're working or or <laughs> taking their kids to school or something like that. It's it's been it's been cool, but I'm I'm pretty active on social media just because mm -hmm. it's fun for me and I like knowing what the what the people are talking about, the 311 people and, and the and all the crazy, crazy artists and the beer makers and, you know, you, you, you name it. There's a, there's a sub subreddit for it one way or the other. And you can uh, appreciate all your, all your little nuances because there's, there's a gang out there for you. And yeah, I like, I like talking it out with people. I've, I played a little bit on Twitter. I've done a couple Instagram interviews like this and gone live mm -hmm. frequently when I can't, you know, can't take it anymore. And I need to just put it into work. I can't just keep it in a little, 
a little, you know, tight little tweet. I've got to talk it out. <laughs> I feel like lately, though, I've been like so, uh, like aggressively messaging, and I'm like, I'd rather just talk it out. It's so much easier to get it out through your voice, and it kind of feels a little bit better as if it were uh, not on your shoulder anymore. If that makes yeah. any sense. Yeah, there there are different ways to communicate, you know, to even the same audience, and that's that's kind of nice. Like, you know, I'm I'm feeling like this. I don't have much to say, or I've got a lot to say and I need to get it off my chest. You know, the the support system is always there. And I like being that for our audience because I see them as that for me, you know, in a lot of cases. That's kind of cool. It's almost therapeutic in a sense. Am I right? Certainly. Certainly. Yeah. You know, on top of you guys doing this uh, drive-in concert next Friday, uh, at least here in Arizona, and then again, uh, I believe the following week in Ventura, am I correct? Yes. Um, okay, it, cool. I think it's it's the next day. It's the next day. How, yeah. I love that you're going back to back with it. But then when it's done, you know, the cool thing is, is you also have um, these live stream concerts that you're doing. The first one, November 11th, uh, which is uh, you're going to play music, the album in its entirety. Then on December 11th, which I love the 11th theme. Love that you guys kept that going. You got yeah. grassroots. <laughs> and then on January 11th, you're doing the blue album in full. Now, when you're putting all of this together, are you just are you just putting the albums in by order that you want to do it? Or did you guys hand select like, oh, we should play this one here or put this one here? I mean, it, it, it's the it's the combination of what we think people would be interested in, um, you know, keep their attention. And uh, because it's a rare thing to do. And then also, like, we can pull it off. Those are albums that we played hundreds of times because they were our only part of our songbook you know we only had a few pages in the songbook so and those were years that we played 100 plus 120 shows a year uh in and out of phoenix with the funk mm -hmm. junkies and uh yeah. and mesa of course the the amphitheater that's strategically positioned that when you have a sound check the sun is <laughs> destroying you it's an absolute <laughs> laser ray of a sound check every time. I don't care what time of the year it is. I'm not even joking, man. They have to have like a magnifying glass, like right in front of everyone, because it burns. I've been on that stage during sound checks, and I'm like, how are you guys doing it? <laughs> yeah, just barely. I've I've stood off stage and sound checked before, like sitting with the with the the monitor man. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, to make you even feel more welcome in Arizona, we've decided we're going to put the stage right in front of the sun so that you can see it directly, you know, get that Arizona feel in you, you know what I mean? I appreciate that. Yeah, it's going to be 95 uh, California. Might as well just keep the heat coming. Well, you're right. Well, you're lucky. I think we're cooling down a little bit. For some reason, we're completely skipping the 80s and we're going straight to the 70s. So you're going to oh, feel love real nice. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, something kind of cool, too, that I've noticed and I've been really intrigued about is you guys came out with a comic book this last year. Yeah, yeah. What a, what a fun little project. It's, uh, it's just uh, you never know what opportunities are going to pop up when you stick together for 30 years. <laughs> yeah, you guys have done a lot of really cool things for your fans. Uh, this one is I'm, I love comic books. I love video games. I'm just that person. Um, but the fact that you turned it into relate to your last album, Voyager, it is really cool. How did the idea come about, though? Um, the publishing company got a got a hold of us. As far as we we've got artists, and we can and we can make this work for you, given a uh, you know kind of a promotional tool, and knowing that there is that subset of people that will love to have uh characters made of us and then sent on missions to uh save the universe as as, as unoriginal <laughs> that is um but yeah it's really fun the 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 14 year old in me was very excited about getting it together and you know i've i've talked to people at and uh comic book uh and graphic novel um publishers and uh you know, just about ideas before. So to see something come all the way out and into print and have people excited about it is really, is really, really cool. Now, are you, are any of you involved in the, the storytelling of the comic book? Or well, does that just come from the publisher? Yeah, no, the, the writers are writing it. We're letting the, we're letting the pros, pros take care of it, but we ha okay the, 
you know, the, the, the loose, uh, you know, story as it is. And, mm -hmm. if, and if we're offended by anything, we'll, we'll strike it down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. How cool is it for you to see yourself, uh, you know, being immortalized as a comic book character? Because uh, I saw that you're the reclaimer, which is, for those that don't know, is like the hustler, smooth talker, master of social engineer, which sounds just like you. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's great. It's, it's fun. It, I, I, like, I like putting on different hats, and I, and I love that world. I mean, the, I've, got a, I've got a Punisher tattoo that I've had since I was 18, you know, and it's, it's, uh, it's something that, I love comic book art. It's one of the few things like uh, that, like jazz, that I think are are uh, very American. You know, I, I don't I don't know if comic books started in America or anything, but it always the American version of it feels like a uh, a proud thing to share with the world. And then of course, you know, you go to go to Asia and and uh, and Europe and see how they do it differently is just an, another way to you know know the whole world in one little like i said like subset of of our community um mm -hmm. in graphic novels and comic books it's a beautiful thing that's awesome now i guess we're just waiting on a movie about 311 coming up <laughs> join the marvel universe <laughs> Yeah, join the Marvel Universe. You might, you guys should have just came in right at the end of uh, Endgame when everyone just, you know, circled hand in and to beat Thanos. I saw you guys right behind uh, Black Panther, so it was great. Oh. It's a really cool addition. Oh. <laughs> I can't watch. I'm scared to watch Black Panther again. Oh, I did, and it hit me right in the feels. It, it hit so much harder than the first five times that I watched it, but... <laughs> It's such a great, such a great movie. Yeah. You know, another cool thing, you know, since we are kind of talking about like movies or whatever, but um, you've been dropping these webisodes for 30 years of 311. And you guys have been going down all these memory lanes and, and all these awesome events that you've done. What was it like for you trying to remember some of these things? Or are they just as clear as day for you? Um, yeah, it's, it's a give and take. I mean, some some of it is easy to remember and some of it, a lot of it is uh, is I'm surprised I forgot it. So it's good to see all the video. And um, we came in in a nice strategic time where where we you know cameras were cheap and uh, it's easy to get film of of even 25, 28, 30 years ago, um, mm -hmm. kind of on that edge of of consumer camcorders. <laughs> and and, uh, and how great it is to really relive that and share it with the with the fans and. And just to uh, just to have it documented in that way is such a cool, cool thing to have. So to be able to share it online with people and get people excited about, um, you know, how long we've been doing it and how much we're looking forward to continue doing it is uh, is really fun and, and something to remember unto itself. I would have to say the coolest thing about watching, you know, some of these webisodes is you know, I always hear about the 311 cruises and how wild and fun they are and, you know, how it's just a massive community. But to really see it uh, on a screen was it just blew me away. I was like, man, I can't wait till this pandemic's over. I'm booking my first cruise. I'm going to go and check this out. <laughs> if, if it's possible, we'll, we'll do it again. I see it as I see it as at least semi unlikely. They're smashing, yeah. they're smashing cruise ships. Cruise ships scare, in general, cruise ships scare me because I always have this fear that we're going to be left out in the water and no one's going to rescue us. <laughs> I don't know why. But I feel like if I were with an awesome group of people that love the same band as I do and everything's all about unity, I'm like, well, at least I'm with people. So <laughs> yeah, it's, it's magic. It really is. It, it was. I think the version that will exist uh, post pandemic is uh, destination shows. We'll go to we'll go to the Caribbean together, and we'll be at a hotel resort together, and we'll we'll all be together, and we'll have uh, great great guests, and and you know, a, a unique setting like that gets people in the mood, and the band as well. And yeah, the first cruise was so electric. I mean, it's it was it was levitation. There, I barely touched the stage. I was floating the whole time. And then what's great is it's not, it's, you know, it's 2,000 people. It's not a, it's not a huge, huge show, but everybody being like-minded and not going home and, and, uh, and loose 
inhibitions. <laughs> you know, make it all just a magic, magic scene. So that's why we did it six times. And I'm happy we got it in uh, as many times as we did because, uh, yeah, the whole thing's up in the air, you know. But we'll, we'll find another way to, uh, you know, travel together and be in destinations together. Yeah. So basically the opposite of fire Festival is what you guys are going for with these destination ones. Yes. No <laughs> chicken sandwiches for anybody. Unless that's what you're in. Unless it's your choice. <laughs> oh, that is too great. Has there been an idea that you guys wanted uh, to pursue with your fans that has not come uh, to light yet? Um, I don't know. I mean, we, we're, we're happy just concentrating on the music most of the time and, mm -hmm. and the, the breadth of the audience has allowed us into these rooms and these conversations where we've, you know, released a movie. We have a continuous beer uh, family that's growing, um, that cruises, uh, 311 day. It's, it's all, the, a lot of them are, aren't our ideas at all. We're just running with it and enjoying the inspiration that comes from our, our huge community. And, and our ability to pull things off. And we've been lucky to be working with good people on all of those things and to uh, really enjoy spreading out, not just being a band while concentrating on it, but uh, you know, having mm -hmm. a great that lets us into these rooms. Nice. Well, um, I do have one more question because I think a lot of people are wondering that are huge fans of yours is, uh, what is what is the status on music or new music that could potentially be happening this year? Or have you guys been working on anything? Um, it's mostly been quiet. I've, I've linked up with Nick a couple of times after I sent him a demo that I didn't know if he'd like or not. I mean, welcome to welcome to demos. But um, I got a 12 string for my birthday and uh, and was playing that for just days and days and days and came up with this progression that I built on with a drum machine and, and some, and some chords and, uh, and sent it to Nick and he really liked it. So he added a, a part to it and like put the, put the boom bap in it. I didn't have any boom bap. I, I was, I wondered what was missing. And there was a little, there's, there's a little tiny programming, little Fushante programming going on. But, um, but Nick put in the boom bap and I was like, ah, oh, so that's why I work with this guy. So it was really, it, it was really fun. And, we wrote we wrote lyrics together and it's it's like three quarters done and the best part of it is we don't know you know when or where it'll come out and if even but it's just really fun being creative still with someone that you've worked with for 30 years and really enjoying the process because uh he's 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 so much fun to work with he's he's so you know he can finish my sentences and i can finish his and uh and musically he makes my my bad ideas make a lot more sense and uh <laughs> i get him into like weird weird hats <laughs> <laughs> so it's great we balance each other out i think and and it's a it's a it's a cool song called uh new inspiration at this point well i am very eager to hopefully hear this in the near future even if it's sooner or later i'm just glad that it's going to be coming out i hope um well peanut I am looking forward to next Friday, oh. seeing you guys again, two shows, finally getting back in action where you're going to be in front of a crowd. People oh. are going to be honking. <laughs> it's going to be a ton of fun, man. Uh, um, it sounds like so much fun. It sounds like something we talked about when we were just getting started as far as like setting up a trailer and stealing electricity and just playing anywhere, you know, <laughs> just setting up and hoping that people come and, you know, really just staying as loose as possible about it and making sure the audience has as much of a good time as we're having on stage. So I see, I see that's how it's kind of going to go down and being in the round is something that we don't really get a chance to do. So I, mm -hmm. as a, as a performer, I'm really, really looking forward to that. And as someone that's been sitting around for six months, not getting any exercise, it's going to be a great challenge and I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man well you better stretch up or something on friday because oh. you're definitely you're gonna definitely need it with all the hops and everything happening well peanut thank you for spending some time with me today and with all your fans we're really excited for next friday again go and get your tickets at concertsinyourcar.com for both shows don't miss out on on one do both of them it will be important <laughs> hey have a great rest of your day man thank you so much we'll catch you later take care you too. Bye.